Baby, be in love with your fantasies I can be a star, make a sky so bright Welcome to my dungeon, this is ecstasy Let me play the fantasy You ready? Yes Alright, so y'all, we're gonna go ahead and check out uh, a clip from Awaken with JP um, uh, A lot of topics that he talks about are like like serious things But he kind of makes it kind of like in, in a comedic, kind of a, a satire-ish way so this one is talking about why I was wrong about firearms. Okay, because he did one the other day. We actually did a reaction to the one. I guess he made one originally. Mm -hmm. And now he's saying why I was wrong about it. So I guess maybe he got a lot of backlash on that on that video maybe why he made this video. Because this one came after. Not I, too much longer, I don't think. I wouldn't get fooled by the headline because you know how he is with, with the headline. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's going to go that way. Look, look at his face right now. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Enough said. Okay, so yeah, we're going to check out Awaken with JP, uh, talking about why I was wrong about firearms. Yeah. The right to bear arms is not only my favorite constitutional right, <laughs> it's the only constitutional right that I know of. Hi there, friends. I was wrong about guns. I, I used to be pretty anti-gun. I'm a little embarrassed to say that. I thought they weren't necessary and we'd be better off without them. Like, please government, just take our guns, disarm us. What an idiot I was. I even made this video back in 2017, pretty much making fun of people who were pro guns. Uh, Watch this example of how ignorant I was. Yes, I'm outraged. And emotionally outraged people are the ones that should have guns in their hands because we can think the clearest. I was completely wrong, but I've changed my mind. I now view the Second Amendment as absolutely essential in upholding our freedoms and our liberty. I believe changing one's mind about something isn't a bad thing. I actually think it's a good thing. It's called learning, evolving your thinking, and accordingly, I like to admit when I was wrong. So I want to go through a few clips from my old anti-gun video and share how my thinking has evolved. And I'll also share a shocking fact about what happens when citizens allow their government to disarm them. So this isn't going to be so much of a comedy video. Thanks for the ride. Ah, now it's a comedy video. No, this will be more of a... I was wrong about guns and I love freedom and the second amendment is vastly important at protecting our freedom. So here's what I learned video. So let's take a look. Just think about now, it. I don't know if I'm, if I'm taking him seriously or not right now. <laughs> I know. It's like, I don't you know. don't know where he playing and where he not playing. Because that, initially he's saying that he was anti. Yeah. I didn't know that though. Like after we watched the video that we just watched of his, like yesterday. Yeah. This is, this is, so now I'm really curious to hear how he's evolved into into his thinking because, well, I'll wait. I'll wait. Let's just get into sure? it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Protecting our freedom. So here's what I learned video. So let's take a look. Just think about it. What if we face a tyrannical government who turned against us using the military? We would need guns to form a militia to fight the oppressive government. A tyrannical government? Well... That could never happen. Yes, it could. I was wrong because it's happening. I mean, even outside of what's happening in the U.S., take a look at what's happening in Australia and Canada with the tyrannical regimes keeping people locked in their homes, taking people out of their homes to detain them, and putting people into camps. Do you think the tyrannical powers that be just don't want to go that far in the U.S.? No, of course they do. There's just one minor difference. The U.S. population is armed. The Second Amendment is intended to allow citizens to protect themselves from a tyrannical government. But Australian and Canadian citizens have been disarmed, which means they don't have any inherent protection against the authoritarian government and what they're trying to do to those people right now. And how can the Chinese Communist Party abuse it? Well, what are they trying to do to them? Disarm them? I, I, I don't know. He said what That's they're trying what, to do so to people far. like... What they trying to do to the people in Canada? I was not aware of that. I mean, what? Oh, you know what? Because I did see something in regards to Christy recently uh, putting something into play in regards to Canada, like in regards to like firearm laws. I did see something in regards to that. If anybody, really? if, if anybody knows about that, y'all can like chime in. But I did see a headline in regards to Canada 
recently, within like a week or two. So, so firearms are not allowed in Canada? I have no idea. That is really surprising to me. No, I, I, I believe that they can have them. I, I'm not, I, I don't think, no, they're not to that point where you just cannot have one. Okay, he, no. I thought he said that, that that they disarmed their population. Probably to a degree where they've taken taken some things away, but I don't think that they've completely just completely eradicated it. If, if they did, y'all let me know. Come on, Canada. Cor- correct me if I'm wrong. Let us know. <laughs> I need to know about this. Oh, they might be banning that uh, hand firearms in Canada. Woo! Okay. And what they're trying to do to those people right now. And how can the Chinese Communist Party abusively walk all over their citizens? Well, just like Australia and Canada, China disarmed their population a long time ago. Since making my old anti-gun video, I've since learned the Founding Fathers were wise enough and humble enough to know that humans are susceptible to being corrupted by power. That's why they had the foresight to empower future generations to protect themselves from people in the government who became corrupted by power. Protect themselves with the Second Amendment. Let's move on. And because the military only has machine guns, tanks, fighter jets, missiles, and atomic bombs, it's sensible to assume that me owning a gun would prevent the oppressive government from taking control over me. Well, let's see if Biden agrees. Well, the tree of liberty is not water in the blood of patriots. What's happened is that there have never been, if you wanted to think you need to have weapons to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. Oh. The point is that there's always been the ability to limit, rationally limit the type of weapon that can be owned and who can own it. Trying to minimize the vast importance of the Second Amendment, Joe? Personally, I am very skeptical of any government with guns trying to take the guns of the citizens. And the Biden administration is trying to do just that. A government with guns trying to take your guns is the exact reason why the Founding Fathers gave us the right to own guns. Next. Our constitutional rights are the most important thing in this world. In fact, they're more important than the world is. Born out of my own ignorance, I thought it was silly and unnecessary to be concerned with our constitution. It's like that old thing, like it's not going anywhere, don't worry about it. Do we really need to talk about it? But since then, as the Hmm. current administration has absolutely walked all over every constitutional right of ours, I've snapped out of my ignorance and realized not only is the constitution vastly important, because it's what gives us freedom, but protecting it is just as important. So I've learned that protecting and preserving the Constitution is necessary in order to protect and preserve our lives as free, sovereign Americans. The right to bear arms is not only my favorite constitutional right, it's the only constitutional right that I know of. There's a quote from Dave Chappelle that says... So it's it's like, he's like, he's like, he's like the typical, like, I guess, like, redneck type... (laughs) Why are you talking though? Uh, it's just like American with that type of like mind frame. That, that's what he's speaking about. I don't. That's who he's depicting right now. Yeah. Because he's like, you're not going to take ours. I mean, when you think about it though, like if if I'm being completely honest, there was a point like in time where I felt like you know maybe maybe we shouldn't have them, but like as time mm-hmm. progressed, like I feel like it, that was something that evolved over time, like that I kind of had to like fix myself to understand why it's important that people have the right to bear arms. But it depends on who you ask because I feel like people have been affected differently. You know what I mean? Like if you ask somebody that has been in a, in a, in a, you know, in a situation where, where there were firearms involved heavily, you know, and, and, and you 1000% had your, your life, Fear for your life, I, I feel like you would think differently about people who have access to that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Cause they, cause versus... Because the everyday average Joe had been in, in a lot of those right. particular situations. I mean, we just had this situation. I mean, there's multitude of like situations and, and instances where people would be like, why do they even let... Why? <laughs> why do we even have that? Mm-hmm. But then there's other situations where it's just like, you know, the, shoot. Some people are, are thankful that they had what they had to protect themselves right, 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 because right. they needed to, you know? So, 
I just feel like that that's just a revolving door. It depends on who you ask and how you feel about it, but yeah, even for me, I'm like I don't I wouldn't want anybody to be trumping over my Second Amendment right. Mm-hmm. You know, if if they're saying you know that's your right to protect yourself, you know, to protect your family, yeah. you know, your livelihood, you know, I, I just it's, it's just all about you know. I feel like there um, should be a limit, like a limitation to the type of firearms that you're able to purchase like the, the the in terms of like the models and what they are but essentially like no i, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't just take it away yeah i personally wouldn't take yeah it away. And, and that's just my personal opinion about that too yeah. as well definitely 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 i'm definitely against that yeah it's the only constitutional right that i know of there's a quote from dave Chappelle that says the first amendment is first for a reason and the second amendment is just in case the first one doesn't work out. Yep, the scene was happening today and throughout history. It's pretty much opened my eyes to realizing that all the other amendments pretty much hinge on the Second Amendment. Because without it, the other amendments can be taken away, and citizens have no way of protecting themselves from the people trying to take away their rights. Look at my finger on the trigger. Now, this is a fake gun in the video. By the time I put the video out, the comment section was loaded with people just being like, hey, get your finger off the trigger, you nut job. I'm like, you're a nut job. Now I get it. Even with a fake gun, proper trigger safety is damn important Mm -hmm. because you wouldn't want to enforce a bad habit, which leads you to accidentally Alec Baldwin-ing someone. I own a gun to protect me and my family. Old JP thought owning a gun to protect your family was just a deceiving excuse to own a murder weapon. Wrong again, JP. Like, I have a family now. So now I very much understand that being able to protect your family is part of what makes you a true man, father, and husband, instead of relying on someone else to protect your family. Now, if you're like, well, JP, I'm not set up to protect my family, so what are you saying? Oh, well, I'm saying you're not a real man. I think better to have a gun to protect your family and not need it than need a gun to protect your family and not have it. I just use the gun that I keep on top of That's exactly what I was just trying to explain. <laughs> like, it's, it's a different situation when you feel like, man, I'm, I'm glad I, I did have something to protect myself mm-hmm. rather than not having anything at all, you know? Like... It's all about self-perseverance, you know? I mean, you, everybody have to look out for themselves. I mean, and like you said, at the end of the day, you want to be able to protect yourself to the fullest Heck extent. yeah, it's a scary you know? situation. I mean, it's scary either way you want to put it. It's, you know, it's a very sensitive topic, I feel like. And it's it's unfortunate because of all the, you know, events that have taken place over and the, it, and the course of the last, you know. And, and, and it's just so touchy, you know, in regards to, like, stuff Absolutely. that goes on, especially when you start bringing up, like, mass shootings Absolutely. and things of that nature. Yeah. And then you start seeing, like, the media and you start seeing it fester up again in regards to talking about, you know, gun policies, gun control. And, yeah, but you know, what's... All of that. To me, like, I feel like we need to address what the, what the actual issue is. Because for those situations to happen, like... And not necessarily I'm talking about crime. Like, just your regular crime, you know, but... <sighs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Yeah. But, uh, damn it. Yeah, I mean, you were just saying that just at the end of the day, I mean, you know, we're all entitled, you know, to that Second Amendment. But, mm-hmm. I mean, like you said, you have to be able to protect your family. You know, I forgot what I was going to say, people though. Around really you. good. Okay. You sure? Let me, let me give you a second. Let's just, <laughs> let's just keep going. Okay. Then need a gun to protect your family and not have it. I just use the gun that I keep on top of my safe. Ever not. No, you look right over there at that one, honey. Now, I'd like to point something out. How good is that accent I'm using? (laughs) I think it's pretty good. I practiced it for like 30 seconds before I shot that video. And the reason why I use a southern accent in this gun video was to help portray gun owners as stupid. Because there's a stereotype. That's what I was going to say. The mentality, like the 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 mental illness part of it, is the mm-hmm. part that I feel like needs to be addressed more than anything. Like that is the problem that we need to address first. <laughs> it's important, you know, because I like it, it's like a pattern. Obviously, we see the same trend of uh, like of these situations, these horrific events that are unfolding, and, and most of the time, it's people who have mental illness, just problems, mm-hmm. like. 
Why don't we address and, that? It just feels like every time that stuff comes up, like we just avoid it all together. It is, like, it is, as if it does not exist. And it's like you see like the red flags. They always talk about the red flags. This, you know, this was happening behind the scenes. And it's just like. So-and-so knew this. And he had a history of this. Help, and you know? It's just like. Okay. I mean. It, it, and I think what's more disheartening and what, what hurts more is like when you, when you learn after the fact about all that stuff. It's just like. I don't but all hear... the signs are usually right. there. They're right. already there. Everybody's already seen it. It's not typically it's not a secret that these people have problems. Yeah, but we don't find out until after it happens. No, like, we you know? know. Yeah, we know. It's it's just not That's prohibited. The That's the problem. Until it happens, like and and then brought to the for forefront, like, oh, oops, you know, oh yeah, we did know, oh. Yeah, yeah, he did have these issues, but yeah, I, again, like I said, I, I just don't, I just can't stand it when you hear about these tragic events and then you hear about that. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. I, Afterwards, I feel like that like, part is more frustrating. That right, it's so frustrating to me. I agree. That people with a southern accent are stupid. Now, I know southerners. I know you're not stupid. I didn't invent the stereotype. I was just leveraging it. And now, after breaking out of my cocoon of firearms ignorance. Not only have I realized that gun owners tend to be very smart people, but I've also realized that gun owners tend to be smarter than people who don't own guns because gun owners are smart enough to own guns. Every night when I walk in the front door from work, my man hysterically screams at me to identify myself while pointing a gun in my face. And I feel so protected with him and his guns around because I know he's keeping me safe. Amber was just my fiance at the time. Now she's my wife, but I digress. Here, what we're basically portraying is gun owners are reckless and unsafe with their guns. Wrong again, JP. <laughs> Over the past couple of years that I've gotten into guns, I've been very impressed at the level of respect and devotion to gun safety that every single gun owner that I've encountered has. I consider getting proper gun training absolutely essential if you're going to be a first-time gun owner. I think owning a gun and not having proper training probably puts you in far more danger than the level of protection it gives you. Now, the first thing I did when I bought my gun was an immersion course on gun training with Sheepdog Response. If you're a first-time gun owner and have no idea where to begin, I highly recommend Sheepdog Response's Protector Level 1 program. As Spider-Man's uncle once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Absolutely. Then his, his uncle died later that night. <laughs> wow. He might not have died if he had a gun on him. <laughs> Just saying. Next, <laughs> some countries that outlaw guns don't have mass public shootings. We can remind ourselves that gun laws only affect law-abiding citizens, not criminals. Mass shooters are criminals. Criminals aren't like, well, I was going to murder someone with this gun, but I don't want to risk getting a gun possession charge to go along with my murder charge. So I'm not going to do it. I'll obey the gun law. If a potential mass shooter knew that everyone around him was armed or her, you psychotic women, then he'd be pretty discouraged from opening fire. That's why very few mass shootings happen in Texas, because everybody knows that most people in Texas are carrying. In fact, last year in Texas, there was a crazy person walked into a church, opened fire, but he was quickly shot and killed by a man carrying his own gun. Consider this. Wow. Remember that? I do. Remember, I do that? remember that? Yep. I do remember that. And, 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 and they were in church. And not just that, but it actually... Here in Dallas, it, ha it happened last week, too. Yep. Uh, not too close from, from where I grew up at. In where, uh, where, Duncanville. In Duncanville. Yeah. Yeah, at the field house. Like, uh, another person walked into, um, the field house is what, more of like a, like a recreational center? Uh, Kid like where they do, like, the, uh, like isn't it mostly where they do, like, their workouts and stuff workouts. like that? Like, the ath athletics and stuff, they... They, they hold, like, bas like, kid, like, you know, um, basketball games there. Yeah. Like little league basketball game, mm -hmm. but anyways, they they have a right now in the summertime they have a a, a a day program where kids can go and have like summer camp there. And like last week, uh, an individual walked in there to do the exact same thing to have a mass shooting in this particular place where kids were having like summer camp. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened where little a kids where a person was there and and they were able to save the kids. They were able to save you know um, the summer camp 
director, like all the people that were there, mm -hmm. they were able to, like, to get the kids to a safe area, and then at the same time, they were able to dis disarm the guy, and, yeah. and, and, and you know, they killed him, mm -hmm. you know? So again, like just like he talking about right now, we gotta be able to protect ourselves. But he was quickly shot and killed by a man carrying his own gun. Consider this, Switzerland issues all of their citizens a gun and the proper gun training to go with it. And that helps give Switzerland the lowest rate of gun crime out of any civilized country in the world. Let's bring this home. Some countries that outlaw guns don't have mass public shootings but they don't have real men in their countries, neither. Remember that whole guns are meant to protect you from a tyrannical government kind of thing? Well, anytime a government disarms their population, they always tell them, we're doing this for your protection. Sound like a familiar narrative? But what the government doesn't tell you is, now you won't be able to protect yourselves from us. I think we can either look at history and learn from it and do things better, or we can look at history and ignore it and repeat the same patterns. Something history teaches us is that any time a government takes away their people's guns, catastrophe follows. I wish this wasn't the case, but it's a true pattern in history. For example, consider these shocking historical facts about what happens when a government disarms their population. And oh man, this is about to, this right here, I know he about to run down the list. Get your notepad out. Oh man. Get your notepad out, okay, write this down. Okay, take a deep breath. 56 million. Here we go. These shocking historical <laughs> facts about what happens when a government disarms their population. In 1911, Turkey established gun control. Then from 1915 to 1917, 1 1.5 million Armenians, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. In 1929, the Soviet Union established gun control. And from 1923 to 1953, about 20 million dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. China established gun control in 1935. Then from 1948 to 1952, 20 million political dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. Germany established gun control in 1938. Then from 1939 to 1945, a total of 13 million Jews, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. Cambodia established gun control in 1956. Then from 1975 to 1977, one million educated people, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. Guatemala established gun control in Guatemala. 1964. And from 1964 to 1981, 100,000 Mayan Indians, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. Uganda wow. established gun control in 1970. Then from 1971 to 1979, 300,000 Christians, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. 56 million people were rounded up and exterminated in the 20th century because of gun control. It is essential for America to protect our Second Amendment. It's not a stretch to say that our current government is already enacting tyrannical mandates and eroding our freedoms. And the same administration wants to get our country to a point where the citizens are disarmed. We know history, and therefore we know it's important to stay armed. Again, consider Australia, Canada, China, and even North Korea. They have severe tyrannical rule and abuse because those societies are not armed. It is a pain in the ass for a government to... Do you think that's why that they're that abusive though? Is because <clears throat> their population is unarmed? Like they can't defend themselves against like the abuse? Because, I, I, you know, I, I brought to you a lot of stories and stuff that I've seen, like read of, of different countries and stuff. Like I won't go into it, but... Is that why that they that they treat them that way? I mean, I'm, I mean, obviously, if you give the gov the government that type of power over you, what do you think they're going to do? That I mean, they can use as much power, as much force against you as they want because they have you at a at, at a weaker stance. Man, that is scary. You know, and not even that, but a lot of things that he's saying here in regards to like Cambodia, Turkey, China, uh, Guatemala, Australia. Australia, like I would want to kind of like look into like the chain of events that actually happened because he was given dates in regards to like people, groups of people being rounded up and, and, and killed or yeah, exterminated. I would want to like know a little bit more deeper in regards to like what was going on because he just it's, it's just so vague because he's just saying this is what happened. This happened this many people, but like what was 
But the history on? behind them all is, is like you said, they, they all basically gave the same reason as to why they felt like they should have the gun control laws, Hi- hypothetically being because it was to protect the people. Right. And, and and ultimately, it was like a... You got duped. You got you got got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got got. Societies are not armed. It is a pain in the ass for a government to violate people when people can defend themselves from being violated. Oh, and along those same lines, here's a fun fact. During World War II, Japan decided not to invade mainland America because they knew most Americans are armed. The current administration will shamelessly use any public shooting to try to persuade the public through fear-mongering and deception to think it would be a good idea for us to turn in our guns. But keeping history and therefore the vast importance of the Second Amendment in mind will probably serve us much better than keeping their propaganda in mind. History teaches us when a government tries to take your guns, That's the exact government you will soon need to protect yourself against. In conclusion, I forgive myself for being anti-gun for a while, but I really appreciate my willingness to learn and change my mind and I'll be pro-gun. And the reason why I'm very pro-gun is because I'm very pro-freedom. History has taught us that demented people will eventually try to take your freedoms if you let them. But the Second Amendment allows you to protect yourself to keep your freedoms. Even though I can look at my past self that made this anti-gun video and think, You're an idiot! (laughs) It's important to me to actually leave that video up online rather than deleting it. Because I want people to be able to see the evolution in my thinking about guns and my willingness to change my mind. I'll leave you with this. Freedom is the very thing that makes life worth living. And the Second Amendment protects that gift. So that's what I think about guns. But what do you think about guns? Let me know in the comments. Have you changed your mind at all about guns in the past two years that the world has changed? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, stay free, my friends. One quick thing. Wow. Wow. A lot of... um interesting points there very sensitive subject i feel like it's very controversial when you start talking about firearms and how people feel about it because like i said it depends on who you ask and and the situations that they've had to you know kind of go through even Mm -hmm. even even military people with ptsd like it's just there's a there's a lot of there's a fine line when you start when you start discussing it and talking about it and i mean because I, I, I feel like, I mean, part. at the end of the day, I do feel like people can debate it either way. People will, will feel indifferent and, and people will be like, no, heck no, there's no way I'm going to give it up. There's mm-hmm. no way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Ever. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and kind of what I was thinking about, too, is also kind of like how he kind of depicted the, the actual video, kind of like changing his, his, his mindset, you know, yeah. from, from being anti to being pro. Yeah. And, and not just that, but like the reasons why. Well... I feel like, you know, part of my reason was because I just, I mean, I wasn't, like, I didn't really know a lot about it, and I just thought it was crazy, you know, then, you know, I I had my own experience, you know, in the military, learning, like, all of that, and so, like, my perspective kind of changed about it because I felt more safe, you know, with having it, like, even, even, shoot, now. Especially, especially, (laughs) everywhere I go. Especially in regards to, um, you know, just like, like the education behind it, too. Yeah. Because that's very important, too, because a a lot of people are apprehensive in regards to owning one or having one. It's it's, it's because they don't feel safe about it or having it in their home. So I I like what, what he was saying in regards to, like, Switzerland. Like, they'll actually, like, make sure people actually, like, go through a course or class to do something to be, just more educated on it. That helps too, as well, in regards to it. Um, just the education behind it. Yeah, I mean, because I I, I do believe a lot of people are responsible mm-hmm. that that do have them, and obviously with kids and children around and stuff, you got you got to take so many more precautions to, you know, keep that under wraps. But at the same time, I'm just like you know, I I feel a lot more safer knowing that I do mm-hmm. ha- have it. I mean, them. I don't I'm trying to you know choose my words carefully y'all but um you know 
I, then we've had conversations with people who, who like, even now, like, I, I have a friend in particular, like, she's just like, there's absolutely no way. She has no kids, no children, in, nothing. And she's like, I'm not, I will never bring, oh, a, bring a firearm in yeah. this house. And see, and see, the, and see, that's, again, in regards to that, like, people have that mindset, bitches being mm-hmm. completely, completely anti. And, you know, like I said, I don't know everybody's personal reason behind it, but maybe her personal reason is that she just doesn't feel safe. She's just never been educated about them, and she just feels... Like her personally, she just doesn't have a need for it. Yeah. So I mean, perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Because you have people that are just completely terrified of, of them and don't want anything to do with it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But this was a good video. It was actually really good to see that. I, I was surprised to see that he had an anti yeah. firearm video in yeah. here, <laughs> considering because what we just saw yesterday. Yesterday, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So for for him to change his mindset in regards to that, you know, that just shows you. Everyone can evolve.